dok oni budu, while they are, I'm confused which language to use, you know, so I am from Serbia for those who do not know and until they connect my presentation, I just want to say that I'm so humbled to be here today and privileged. Uh, when I arrived uh, at 9 o'clock and entered the hotel, there were actually more than 50 people still waiting to, to register for, for the conference. And we see that uh, the interest is bigger than it's this room. And uh, uh, unfortunately, I'm old enough to know that the last time I've seen this kind of uh, um, queues was in the early 90s when we were queuing for bread in this country. And I am so happy that we are now queuing for, for knowledge, that we have hunger for knowledge. And that actually made me very energized because that means that I am in the right place. You know, so, so I felt very good about that. So I thank you all and I thank you, I thank Institute of Contemporary Sciences for inviting me to give this uh, keynote to all of you. Um, uh, it was such an inspiring presentation from Terry and I will now just uh, 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 go a little bit more to some maybe down-to-earth uh, reality for uh, many of you, and that is to talk about how to make your CEO believer, and why is uh, in data science, and why do I think it's an important topic? Well, uh, we already mentioned earlier, let me just see if this, we mentioned earlier how changing environment it is now, and so many things that are sometimes considered as buzzwords, and all management teams, leadership teams, actually need to find a way how to survive and thrive in this environment, to find, to navigate into this, uh, through this uh, 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 changing and very challenging uh, times and to find ways how their companies will survive. And, uh, you know, you might, it, it might come as a surprise for some of you, but uh, many, many leaders actually do not still understand what uh, data science is and how it can help. I even heard from some senior leaders uh, talks like, uh, and messages like, uh, uh, we have Excel, why do we need uh, data science? Uh, many are Okay, I need to probably step back a little bit. Many are talking about what is the value. Do not cl have clarity how to create value from that, uh, from data science. Many do not how, know how to start the projects. Some are overestimating expectations, which is also a problem because not every problem can be solved uh, through data, and maybe you do not have enough data, and may, you need really to have good problem and good data in order to be able to solve it. Uh, also, sometimes we are having a situation that uh, insights found are actually not being capitalized. Somehow it's not uh, uh, embedded in the company so that it can be used. And this is also from my experience, but uh, I will share you the positive story. This is the negative one, uh, but there are also positive examples. I will talk about them a little bit later. Uh, but let me share with you from Kegel. It was mentioned several times by Terry. Uh, there, there was a great survey done in 2017. Uh, more than 7,000 data scientists actually said what is preventing them to have good and successful data projects. And I'm sure that most of these things are familiar with you. Dirty data, lack of data science talent, lack of management, financial support, etc., etc. These are first 10 that I mentioned here. But what struck me is that four of these in first seven are not technology issues at all. These four are actually pure managerial and organizational issues. So we need to find a way how to bridge this gap between this top-down view from leaders and this bottom-up view from data scientists and other experts that are involved in data science projects. And there is a solution. It can be done, although it is not so easy like sometimes it, uh, uh, someone, someone might uh, think. And I will share you how we did it in VIP Mobile and eventually A1 Group. Uh, of course, I hope that there will be some questions uh, on Slido, but I will be also here in the next uh, uh, three days and uh, we'll be happy to uh, chat about this and anything else you are interested uh, uh, more. So, we started in 2016, we are a telco operator mobile company and we wanted to, and we created one product called home internet over mobile network. Using, so 
selling fixed broadband but over mobile network. And that, um, that is great. I mean, uh, why not? We can do it. We have mobile network. But you need to understand one thing about telco industry. Uh, it's not unlimited resource. You know, we are using spectrum, which is scarce resource, and we have very limited spectrum. And by how many we acquire, that is how much we can actually offer to our customers. And uh, we cannot just go and say we want to buy another spectrum. That is something also that is a separate process. And every five, to five six, seven years, we need to buy additional spectrum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we decided we want this new product. We want to offer it. And of course, uh, marketing was very, very excited about that and sales. But in technology area, and I'm leading technology area, we realized that there might be some problems. Why? Because you know how we have a lot of base stations, you know about them, and then we know how much capacity we have, uh, limited capacity based on spectrum on each site. And uh, offering this service means that we will use this capacity faster. But we had only very static way of determining whether we have enough capacity or not to sell this kind of service, which means that we needed to, sell, to define the number of products that we could sell in certain locations. And Somehow we managed to say that is, for instance, 45 for each base station. But what happens in reality? In reality, you might have in some uh, area of some base station um, heavy users, and actually five users can eat up all your capacity. So that means that you should not sell further or you degrade the experience. On some other area, you might uh, uh, be able to sell not 40, but 60, 70, because you do not have heavy users there. So we realize that uh, unless we find a way how to dynamically govern this capacity and this sales process, we actually might end up with bad customer experience and we might end up with less sales that we anticipated. So this, this is a problem that was not recognized by management, I have to tell you. No, management was oblivious about uh, this, me, including me. It was recognized by a subject matter expert, one network engineer who was actually responsible to give guidance to other network engineers how to uh, manage capacity. And luckily, he defined it in a very good way. And then he said, OK, I know which data I have. Maybe we can do something about that. But he needed support because he did not have that knowledge. He needed someone to help, them, uh, to help him to, to see if some insights could be de uh, derived from this data. And luckily, at that time, already for six months, we, we were cooperating with one startup, Serbian startup, ThinkSolver. And we already had our first big data environment uh, built by them. It was 2016. And uh, he started talking with them. And then suddenly, the team was formed. They realized, OK, there is some knowledge we have about machine learning, uh, data science, and data engineering. We have the data. We know what is the problem. Let's try to do it. Of course, that required some support. And they had to come and find this support. They needed some investment support, not only money, but also time. These people needed to work on this and not on something else. So they needed to convince someone that this is a good idea. And they came to me. And how they convinced me? Well, they talked, uh, actually, this colleague of mine talked about business value that he thinks this will bring. And you can see here, it is not just technology area value. It is marketing and sales. It is financial potential value. So he pitched me this idea. And I said, OK, let's try to do it. And then we started. Uh, 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 then then uh, the implementation started. They worked together, so the team was formed, very small team. Uh, I was the sponsor of this uh, uh, idea. And uh, the iterative process started on this uh, uh, project. There, was, there were a lot of things tried and multiple combinations of different things. At the end, it was data cleansing, data smoothing, multiple uh, 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 values imputation, forecasting, expert systems. At the end, three algorithms were used, MICE, VAR, and Facebook Profit. And a lot of iterations, uh, iterations but I think that uh, the um, prototype was done somewhere less than two months. Uh, 
Uh, five months later, we actually had it implemented into business process. So a lot of stakeholders had to be involved in this. Uh, a lot of feedbacks, a lot of tweaking of algorithms on the way. Um, constant communication, but communi at that point in time, it was still around smaller uh, a, a smaller number of stakeholders. Uh, I was involved in every step of the way and I gave continuous support to the team to try to implement it. And you will see later for change management process, which is also a very important part. But the result of this was that at the end of six months period, we actually achieved the, all the promised business values. So we had more sales, we, we did survey and realized that we did not degrade customer experience. So it was not only technology KPIs that showed that we are keeping track with, uh, with uh, network KPIs, but we surveyed the, these customers and realized that this is actually working. We actually had huge CapEx avoidance. I cannot share the figures, but we are talking millions of uh, euros not uh, overspend where it's not needed because we govern the investments properly. Where to put more investments to expand the network and where not if we do not have uh, uh, congestions. Uh, and of course, in technology area, this actually helped to have less manual work and to have better support. So all these values were proven after six months of, uh, of this, let's say, field trial. And that also, uh, uh, that helped to earn the trust. First, I trusted them, so okay, we experimented, it went well, it was not straightforward line, but it went well. Well, we can now move forward and see what else is out there. One thing which we almost forgot and we learned on the way is that we should not under underestimate change management in companies. Because this is really, this process changed the way how we do things. And since it was so successful, it was maybe easier to be accepted by many, many uh, employees. But in general, you need to understand that uh, it's never, not so easy and you need to be a lot patient sometimes. And you who are working in this kind of projects need to spend some time to explain others what that is about. You need to spend a lot of time and energy on uh, uh, communication. You need to organize trainings for people. You need to help them to, to do that. So uh, we maybe underestimated a little bit this change management. So in some areas, it did not go so smooth to accept this new reality that we actually have machine learning driven business process of sales and of network management in our company. And that was the beginning. That was actually the beginning of the story, in my opinion, because that is when we realized that we hit the jackpot and that we have something which requires more, 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 more uh, uh, resources, more time, and that we can do something more. And uh, within a year, we managed to expand this story and it was not anymore VIP mobile story, it became A1 group story. So at this moment, two years after we started, we actually have a fifth country rolled out with this solution. Uh, we have uh, not one use case, we created the platform, SARA, uh, the name is Superior Analytics for Radio, Network, Radio Access Networks by A1 group, but very nice uh, uh, name, I like that it is women name, so we are showing also a little bit of uh, gender appreciation with this. Uh, and uh, uh, I will uh, mention a few of these uh, use cases uh, later, but important is this is a modular platform. We have modules for planning, for operation, for exploration, and for automation. We also have this as a major initiative for network management for the future. There will be no 5G in any of the telco operators unless serious data science is applied, machine learning and artificial intelligence. So this will be mandatory. Uh, a few weeks ago in uh, uh, Telco AI uh, Europe conference in London, we actually heard that uh, uh, there will be standardization of AI for some network elements within 5G in the next year. So this is really important topic for, for telco industry. And more important, it became one of the top initiatives on the agenda of group CEOs. But 
it looks easy when I say like this. Uh, uh, in reality, it was not so easy. It required a lot of communication, a lot of convincing, a lot of discussions with many people to explain them this. And it helped that we had uh, this successful pr proof of concept with this first, first use case. And if you see this, uh, this uh, this uh, slide here, mobile, this picture, mobile network complexity, you can actually see that the complexity of telco networks is growing with such a pace that workforce cannot cope with it. So we need machine learning, we need data science, we need AI in order to manage it. So I'm very happy that we managed from one use case to reach such heights, and not only in A1 group, but since we are owners of, um, uh, the, our owners are America Mobile, uh, next year we will probably go across the ocean and implement this also in Colombia, Brazil, and hopefully many more countries. But let me just tell you and show you a few slides about concrete examples that I mentioned. First one, this capacity management as a function of sales I mentioned already. And the important thing is you see there, that is the screen that our sales agents are having. They actually know now whether they can sell or not because we are stopping sales where, we, where the algorithm is saying, you do not have enough capacity, you will enter congestion st uh, state very soon, you need to take some actions on technology area, but sales is being stopped here. And if there is ability to sell, if, if there is uh, enough capacity, they will have how many packages they can sell and even which tariff. So there is a lot of, uh, 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 the, the important thing here is that it is end-to-end -end business process that we created here and embedded this new learning and this intelligence in this, in this uh, process. I already mentioned some of the algorithms. Uh, second, big area where we focused, and this is one of the most important things for the future for us, is smart capacity planning, so larger scale capacity planning. Before, we used only technology KPIs, but we realized this is not the game of technology, this is business game. So we have to go, uh, not only take uh, our insights from tech data, we need to take marketing data, we need to take financial data. We really need to understand when we are putting some money somewhere, what is our return on investment and whether it would be better to put it on this location, on this location. Because like always in companies, resources are scarce. So you need to find a way how to use these resources in the best possible way. And that is why we need smart capacity planning, because you need to understand one thing more to learn about telco industry. For in, in our group, for instance, we have seven countries, uh, uh, more than 100 million euros each year is being put into telco network, in mobile network. With 5G, this might be even more. So of course that it's important whether we are getting, what kind of return on this investment we will get and whether we are putting these investments in the right place. Before we could not judge it properly. It was a lot of manual tasks, a lot of discussions, verifications, not good, uh, not good uh, accuracy. Right now, we decided we need to focus on this because the, this first use case showed us that it is possible to be done, and we defined again the value. We want better return on investment. We want reduced time to decision where to invest, because that helps us also to, to be competitive on the market. We want more transparency and accuracy in this process. And we did new use case, 4G smart capacity planning, uh, 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 and algorithms used uh, our uh, uh, Facebook profit and came in segmentation. And this actually helps us to get the money now for our investments. And this is helping us to prioritize our investments. The one that we are working on is 5G smart capacity uh, planning. And here we are having already forecasting uh, and we are lo using long short term memory neural networks here. This is when we started using deep learning, actually, before that it was machine learning. And this is, uh, since in Austria we already started implementing 5G networks, this is very important in a year 
let's say in 2021, this will arrive here also, but throughout our group, 5G is al already reality. It's very important because there are so many inputs that we need to get in order to shorten this process of, of planning and to make it in the best possible way. Then long-term capacity forecast, which we need to do, why? I mentioned spectrum earlier. So we are using this spectrum and we need to know now what will happen in a few years and how we can utilize what we have and whether we will have a problem. So maybe we need to have some wider initiative to buy new spectrum because this is not something that we can just go and buy off the shelf. And uh, the, the last but not least that uh, we are working on is an anomaly detection on a cell level. And uh, here we are using LSTM autoencoder and this is crucial to manage the complexity of problems in the network because right now some of the problems in our radio access network are requiring many engineers and working many hours, even days, because these problems are very complex. There are so many different hundreds of KPIs that you, ca you need to look into. And that is why this is very important and helpful in, so, in reducing this uh, uh, time to solve the, pr the problems. So, why, what I want you to take from these slides, not what is done in telco industry. I wanted to show you that you can actually talk about data science and talk about value. Because this, when we started showing these use cases in this way, which is very simple, few technical things, but always the goal, the purpose, why we are doing it and, co and connect it to business strategy. That is important. You need to connect it to business strategy. You need it to connect it to business, business uh, problems. When you communicate it like that, it is actually very easy to get support, or at least it's easier. And that is why I showed you this. And you see, Algorithms are not focal point, they are there mentioned, but it's not how you can communicate if you want to get top management support because, uh, uh, and even not top management, sometimes even with your managers, you might get frustrated because they might lack understanding of what you're talking about. You need to think about how to, how to communicate it differently. And when I'm saying that, I do not think that you all, data scientists and data engineers, have to have skills uh, for communicating. But you're not working alone, you're working in the team. So see in these teams that are working on data science projects, find those who actually can communicate these kind of messages. Agree who is responsible for this and communicate continuously. This is actually how you make your CEO believer in data science. Uh, at the beginning, I took that role in VIP Mobile, but I after a year, I could actually pull back and let the team self-organizing cross-country, cross-domain uh, 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 cross team take this uh, for me. And that is what is important because it's not about having uh, all the time someone pushing this agenda. This became the agenda of VIP Mobile and of A1 Group. And value and how you communicate it is one of the most important things. But if you have a problem still, a few tips, uh, find the problem, business problems that is close to the heart of your managers. Because if you do something for their agenda, they will do something and help you. And at the end, it will be joint agenda. Also, do not uh, forget to m manage expectations through open and continuous communication. O or as the project is progressing, it will not always go straight line. Sometimes you will have to go back. And, this is, and it's okay, but you need to communicate it. That is how you will not have that problem of failed expectations or overestimated expectations. If you did not start or you have a problem how to start, start with something small. And at the end, uh, it is not only on your management to do change management process in your organizations, and I'm sure that your managers will be very, very uh, appreciative if you take some of the uh, some of change management uh, activities and help them actually to and help your colleagues to embrace these changes that machine learning is uh, uh, is uh, bringing. So this is uh, this is actually my the end.
of this presentation. I hope that uh, I gave you some ideas how maybe you can uh, uh, do things in your organization. I'm thank I thank you very much and wish you great, great uh, uh, conference here. Hope to we're, have we're a lot of networking yet. with you. Yes, I wanted to you say thank you questions. and now I will see. No, no, you have questions. a couple of questions. Yes. yes. And Natalie, as a country not part of the European Union, do you face problems exchanging data and solutions with EU countries? Even though Serbia is not a part of the EU, do you also struggle with uh -huh. the GDPR? Okay, well, uh, you always need to take uh, local regulation uh, into account. Luckily for these things, uh, these were not sensitive data because it was not customer data and sensitive data. It was aggregated, it was uh, uh, on the usage level, so it was not a problem. Uh, but uh, even in European countries, every country has different different uh, rules and sometimes it's very hard to extract data so you know you need to be very careful about this how to how to do it uh, we are compliant with all the regulations sometimes it might prevent uh, uh, it might slow down some activities but luckily in this area we do not have that problem yet do you think that 5g is healthy uh, I don't think this is a question for data science conference, but soon I think we will start discussing a lot about 5G and what is going on there. But uh, think about your microwave in your kitchen or think about your Wi-Fi, go to internet, see what is uh, uh, electromagnetic uh, radiation from those and you will see that uh, some things are overblown and that uh, no, you should not uh, trust everything you read in the newspapers or see on YouTube. How many roles your da data science team has? Are there different roles? Or okay, well, our data science, uh, we don't have a data science team per se. We are having teams that are doing data science projects and we are still, and, and uh, we are having very good uh, partnership with uh, Team Solver and they are uh, having these competencies. Other people, subject matter experts are uh, brought to this team to address the topics that are needed, also sales, customer service, marketing, finance guys are involved depending on the use case. So it's not one team that is solving everything. This actually changes uh, and new teams are formed based on business problem that needs to be addressed. And really short, just in 30 seconds, my question is, did I understand you well that you started the whole thing without the budget? Yeah. Yes, but I was smart and found a little, little budget, yes. A little budget, okay. <laughs> well, Thank you. You know, I was in position to do it, but it's not a uh, uh, recommended way you have to find would the you, budget. Would you be able to start without money? I mean, just on the enthusiasm of your team. Well, if they are ready to spend uh, time uh, uh, on that and to learn, I believe it is. Uh, there are so many available uh, uh, learning sources, but I'm not, I'm recommending if the company does not have this kind of uh, knowledge to insource it to, through some partnerships, small or big companies, there are a lot of, uh, many of them, and then to start building your own uh, competencies in-house. Uh, and then have both in-house and partnership. That is my recommendation, my experience. Thank you for that, and this is your certificate. Uh, Please you. show it to you. Thank you. Thank you.